Ah, it's freezing outside, zero degree outside. So I decided to come back to the office and talk about schedule of cost components. Schedule of cost components. And today I'm going to focus on few items only. And those are item 21 to 24 of the items of equipment. The reason being, these are the common areas where people will ask me questions, uh, including consultants, contractor, clients, and uh, sometimes with delegates from the training sections too. So I decided to just put that up in here. Hopefully that will be useful for you. So first of all, what is a schedule of cost components? A schedule of cost components, simply put, is a list of items, cost items, which we call those items defined cost. So what is a defined cost? A defined cost is simply those cost items listed in the schedule of cost component for options C, D, and E in NEC4. So once again, what is a defined cost? A defined cost is simply those cost items listed in a document called the schedule of cost components for options C, D, and E in NEC4. How about option A and B then? In A and B, we have another document called the short schedule of cost components. And you may ask, oh, why do we need two schedules? Is life not hard enough? Now, let me tell you, the reason why we have two schedules here is exactly for the reason being we want to, simpli we want to simplify our life. Why? Because for option A and B, think about it, for, for option A and B, the major use of our defined cost is mainly for compensation events. And therefore, the contract drafter said, well, in that case, there is no point to go for the longer version. Let's create a shorter version of schedule of cost component, and let's call that the shorter schedule of cost components in NEC3. In NEC4, they even delete the two characters ER in there from that word short, shorter, and call that short schedule of cost components. Therefore, for option A and B, Defined cost are those cost items under the short schedule of cost component for options C, D, and E. Defined costs are those cost items under the schedule of cost components. That is the main reason. Okay, so let's go over to some of the items of that schedule of cost components. I will focus on item 21 to 24. These are the common areas where people will ask questions. It concerns with the item of it concerns with the item of equipment. So for me, for me, I have a system, I have a system of categorization. It's just for me only. It's not in the contract. It's just for me only in order for us to memorize or mem uh, remember the concepts easily. You may borrow that concept. You may borrow that categorization. You may have your own categorization, but you may, you may um, borrow my categorization and see if it is helpful for you. So the first category here is item 21. It deals with those items of equipment which are not owned by the contractor. First category. The second category here deals with those items of equipment which are owned by the contractor. So that's second category. The third category deals with some special circumstances. So that's the third category, item 23 and 24. Now, for the rest of the items, I'm not saying those are not important. Those are relatively straightforward. And therefore, I just focus on item 21 to 24. But practically speaking, you need to look through all the items from item 21 to 28 of the contract, of course. Okay, so once again, item 21, not owned by the contract. What do I mean? What do I mean? If something is not owned by you, practically speaking, it happens a lot, a lot for those items which are hired or rented. Take, for example, those printers in your office. Nowadays in the office we don't we don't we don't purchase a print printer anymore. If you ask the admin, they would they, they would tell you, well nowadays we we rent a certain printer from a certain supplier. So the rate, the rent of that of that printer will be paid under item 21. So as simple as that. Now of course there are three bullet points in there. It deals with different situations. For example, item the first bullet point it says are uh, not owned by the contractor. Second bullet point not owned by the contractor's ultimate holding company. And then the third bullet point it says not owned by the company with the same ultimate holding company. The general idea is still the same. For those items, for example, the printers, for example, the powering machines, which are hired, then paid under 21. 
powering machines, for example, are what are the different brands? For example, Cobra, for example, Casa Grande, those powering machines. Now they 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 are rarely purchased by the contractor. They they probably will be hired. Item twenty one. Item 22 here. Item 22 here deals with those items which are owned by the contractor. The payment of which you pay to the contractor under item 22. Item 22. Now this is very straightforward. That is actually the first bullet point of that item. You see, it says owned by the contractor on page 75 of the contract. But the problem arises when we want to define ownership. Of course, if you purchase a certain equipment, uh, purchase certain equipment, you own it. The problem arises when nowadays when things are getting quite expensive and we use installment plans. Take for example your phones, your smartphones, or your car. Nowadays it's quite common for us to pay by a certain installment plans. Now, if we pay by a certain installment plan, it's a very similar concept, although it's not exactly the same. We call those higher purchase. Some of you may be a little confused by that term. So at the same time we hire, at the same time we purchase. So what are you talking about? Is it higher purchase? Higher purchase, simply put, is very similar to your installment plans of your smartphones or your car. As simple as that. But technically speaking, legally speaking, in UK, if you purchase a certain item by a higher purchase, or should I say by, a, by an installment plan, technically speaking, that item is not owned by you yet until you have paid everything. So the ownership problem here can be quite complex. In UK, this is so. In other countries, it may be different. And therefore, it's this NEC here, it says, well, in that case, can we do away that problem? The only way we can do away that problem on the definition of ownership here is to simply include those high purchase items under certain item. And in that case, let's put that under item 22. So the debate is over. Let's not argue. Higher purchase, item 22. Whether it is owned by the contractor or not, it doesn't matter because it's under item 22. And that is the general arrangement of NEC4, Schedule of Cost Component for option C, D, and E. But the, the problem still exists. Why? Because, because if we read on for item 22, how do we do the payment for those equipment owned by the contractor? It is paid according to the open market rates. Open market rates. Well, it's easier said than done sometimes. I still remember sometimes, some time, some time ago when I was when I was working as a construction engineer in a certain railway project, there are some sort of boatings, very large boatings on a certain roof of a railway station. Those boatings are so large that they, they, they basically they don't exist in the market. So how can, we, how can we get an open market rate for those items? For example, those equipment to fix the boatings on the roof, how can we get, a, how can we get an open market rate? Because those equipment simply doesn't exist in, in the market. It's, it's tailor-made. So in that case, NEC says, well, let's have two approaches to do with this. The first approach, we call that the change in value approach. The change in value approach. The second method is simply you put that in contract data as a, as a simple rate. Let's apply that. So the first method, change in value approach, what do I mean? It means, well, well it doesn't exist in the market uh, as if it is a very common equipment, but you still purchase it. And there is a certain purchase price in there. It's not an open market rate because it's tailor-made. Okay, the purchase price, and then you foresee after a number of years, that equipment will depreciate. So same, if that equipment originally cost uh, 100 US dollars, I just make it up, and then it depreciates to 10 US, US dollars over a period of, a period of uh, three years, for example, then the difference here will be $90 here. Let's divide that over the three years. The contractor can say, well, I foresee I will use that equipment, the piece of equipment quite a lot for the first year. So let's put that $50 for the first year. So we have $30 remaining. So let's do uh, the second year, $30. The third year, $10. So 50, 30, 10. We call that the time-related 
on cost charge, and that is under item twenty three. And you may think it is okay, then it is okay, but the problem still exists. Why? Because there are some second hand items. Second hand items can be quite old, but they can be still very useful. They can be still in good conditions. But it is just not practical to to sell it, and therefore, there, first of all, there is no open market price in there because those are those are items that that are quite tailor made, special equipment, for example. And secondly, they are second hand, and there is no point to talk about change in value because it's not practical practical to sell it. No one will want it. Now, in that case, NEC four simply says, "Well, why don't you just put in a rate, put in a rate in the contract data." Let the client have a look during the tender stage. If the client says yes, they accept your tender. So be it. Let's move on. So that is the arrangement of NEC four equipment twenty one item twenty one to item twenty four. It's not that difficult. It's just that you need to read about between the lines and and, and read the words in them, and you will understand. Now I need to send a little reminder here. Why? Because These items, item twenty one to twenty four, are 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 the major areas of amendments for different contracts. Probably in your contracts, there will be amendments under this item twenty one to twenty four, exactly because it is not easy to understand. And therefore, some of the claims we just amended, for example, in Hong Kong, for example, it is a standard amendment in Hong Kong. Many Hong Kong projects they simply delete item twenty three to twenty four, both items delete them both. Of course, there are reasons. Of course, there are reasons. I'm just saying you need to go to your contract, have a look. Don't take things for granted. This is one of the beauty of NEC four here. They allow flexibility, but sometimes it will create some sort of headache for some of the contract managers, including you, the project manager. You need to really read your contract to see if those items really apply. So that is a general a general reminder here, and that. It's a sketch of cost components, item twenty one to twenty four for the item of equipment. Leave that in comment sections if you want me to talk about any major areas that you want me to talk about.、Uh, I find this style quite helpful. And、uh, if you want me to stick around with a certain topic, let me know too. Type that in the comment section, and then I will just do it. Thank you very much.